everyone. I'm Dr. Cynthia Ward and today we're going to be talking about those crazy cats. I'd like to say hi from the University of Georgia uh, and here's our wonderful logo. We also have a new hospital uh, in which I am very privileged to work. We love it. It's uh, about three years old now but it's just a fabulous facility so I certainly invite any of you that get to Athens, Georgia to come and visit us. And I'm also showing a picture of our excellent mascot, Ugga. He is the University of Georgia mascot and shows up to all the football games. And we are very privileged to have him and also get to take care of him at the veterinary school. So today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite things and one of the diseases that I see as a, a small animal internist. And I see this a lot. And that's going to be hyperthyroidism. And I'd like to introduce you to my love of endocrinology and also to my love of hyperthyroid diseases. What I'm hoping to do today for you is to go through a minimal physiology review so that we're all caught up and kind of on the same page as to what I believe are some of the important physiologic principles um, that underlie our understanding of thyroid diseases. And then we're going to be talking about hyperthyroidism. So the first thing I'd like to do is remind everybody about how the thyroid hormone is regulated because this is going to be important when we talk about the diseases and how we're going to test for the diseases when we're looking for hyperthyroid disease in the cat. So uh, if you look at the slide here, this just reminds us what the normal hypothalamic pituitary thyroid axis looks like. So the hypothalamus will secrete TRH, which then acts on the pituitary to cause thyroid-stimulating hormone secretion. This goes directly to the thyroid gland, and remember there's two of them um, on either side of the trachea, uh, and this causes the active hormones T3 and T4 to be secreted from the thyroid gland. Importantly, we need to remember that TSH is almost one well is 100 percent responsible for all the actions of the thyroid gland and one of the things that we will talk about is how we look at tsh and measure tsh to help us understand how the thyroid gland is working so the thyroid gland is then going to say i'm going to secrete thyroid hormones because i've had a drive from the cells that need them I'm going to secrete T4, and that's going to be the main hormone that gets secreted by the thyroid gland, and that's going to travel around the body. It is a cholesterol-based hormone, so it's going to enter the cells without needing a cell surface receptor, and most of the T3 that is created is actually created within the cell, which is one of the reasons that we don't measure it, because most of it is intracellular. As is important in every endocrine axis, the negative feedback inhibition is very strong and probably the most important part of the axis. And here, the secreted T3 and T4 from the thyroid gland will actually inhibit TSH secretion and also TRH secretion. So the amount of hormone that you end up secreting then will turn off the system. The other thing I wanted to talk about, mainly because it can be confusing when we're trying to diagnose thyroid disease, is the syndrome of euthyroid 6 syndrome. And this is a term that was actually created to describe a disease in human medicine. And this is a situation in which some sort of non-thyroidal illness or a drug itself may interfere with the amount of T4 that you're measuring in the serum. And it can do it by a couple of mechanisms, but the main one is that it probably decreases thyroid hormone binding proteins, which are the proteins that carry the free hormone around to the cells. And there's a huge um, reserve of thyroid hormone in the body. So there's a lot of these thyroid hormone binding proteins that kind of sit there around the cells in the bloodstream with thyroid horm hormone bound to them and uh, they provide a reservoir so the hormone can diffuse off those binding proteins and get into the cells um, as required by cellular demands. 
So what happens is when you have another illness, illness or a drug, and this would be an illness that has nothing to do with the thyroid gland, could be a urinary tract infection, could be cardiac disease, it's going to cause a decrease in the amount of thyroid hormone binding proteins that you make. And then this is going to cause a decrease in the amount of T4 that you're going to actually measure in the bloodstream. I put a little graph on here, and this is just um, a uh, uh, an animal that was actually gone through a starvation um, type situation where food was withheld and thyroid hormone was actually measured. The shaded area here is the normal range and just in response to severe uh, disease or severe starvation in this point, you can see that T4 and free T4 both go down, but they come back up into a normal range during recovery. And this is just to illustrate the principle that it has nothing to do with the thyroid gland and everything to do with illness that um, is present in other parts of the body. The most important thing to remember is these animals are euthyroid and the only reason that we care about it is that the T4 that you measure in the bloodstream is not going to represent the amount of thyroid activity that you have and therefore confounds the diagnosis. So even when these animals have a measured low T4 because of another illness, they're euthyroid and they do not need to be supplemented. So the other thing that I want to talk about is exactly what the thyroid hormone actions on the body are. Because you have, if, if you don't know what the thyroid hormone does, then you don't know what to anticipate if you have either too much or too little of thyroid hormone. So let's talk a little bit about the thyroid hormone actions on the body. And basically, the thyroid hormones affect just about every cell. So what you can predict is that if you have a disease that causes an increase or decrease of thyroid hormone, you're going to have widespread effects on many parts of the body. So some of the things that the thyroid hormone does is it increases metabolic rate. Nitrogen excretion is increased. You can have an elevation in body temperature, an increase in your blood pressure, and an increase in your cardiac rate. And that's just because you're being turned on. Your body is being revved up by thyroid hormone. Uh, thyroid hormones have huge effects on the nervous system. And a lot of them we don't actually recognize in veterinary medicine. Uh, but certainly we see lots of effects uh, in hyperthyroid and hypothyroid animals. Um, in regards to nervous system changes in behavior, in um, all kinds of, of, of diseases that even look like the central nervous diseases. So there's a lot that the thyroid hormone does to regulate our nervous system, and it certainly regulates mental awareness. So you'll notice animals that may present to you as being hyperthyroid, may be hyperesthetic, they may be very hyperreactive. Animals that present as being hypothyroid very often are mentally dull. Thyroid hormone affects cardiac, the cardiac system, and this can be quite profound, and it's one of the things that we really look for when we're evaluating especially hyperthyroid cats. So a thyroid hormone can increase the number and affinity of beta adrenergic receptors in the heart. So you get an increased sensitivity to catecholamines with incre increased inotrophic and, and chronotrophic effects. So the, the heart's going to squeeze harder and beat faster. We also know that there's an increased expression of the alpha myosin heavy chain gene and this can all result in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy in cats. But what I'd like you to remember is that if you have a hyperthyroid cat, we really have to look at the heart because this excess of thyroid hormone can really cause a lot of changes to the cardiac system. We see effects on skeletal muscle. If you have a hypothyroid animal, you have profound muscle weakness. And this can manifest in a lot of different ways in especially hypothyroid dogs. Thyroid hormones also stimulate protein synthesis and also stimulate carbohydrate and lipid metabolism. So very often in these animals, if you look at their 
um, uh, if you take blood samples on them and you look at the serum, it can be very hyperlipidemic um, in the absence of thyroid hormone because it, uh, the lipid metabolism and carbohydrate metabolism is slowed down. Thyroid hormone stimulates erythropoie erythropoiesis. So in hyperthyroid cats, sometimes there is an erythrocytosis. In hypothyroid dogs, sometimes you can see a normocytic, normochromic, non-regenerative anemia. Thyroid hormone also stimulates burn, bone turnover and neural and skeletal development. 